During a crisis, our challenges are exposed. If you remember anything at all from our discussion of Hurricane Burl, I ask you to remember those words from Mayor John Whitmire. During a crisis, our challenges are exposed. Many of us are still enduring the handiwork of that crisis inflicting force, Hurricane Burl, a considerable storm which threw forecasters a wicked curveball, jagging off its predicted course and plowing through America's fourth largest city with truly wicked impact, ripping structures, inundating roadways, and knocking out power to two and a half million people. Center Point, our community's monopoly electric infrastructure supplier, says it prepared for the storm by staging thousands of outside repair crews, and yet six blistering July days after landfall, hundreds of thousands of Houstonians are still without power. In the moment, like I said, we were making the decision, the best decisions we had with the information that was available to us at the time. Uh, there were varying reports for which path the storm was going to take. It ultimately took uh, the path that created the most uh, damage and havoc for us. If Center Point meets their goals by Sunday, they will have reduced it from about 2.2 million people without power down to still about 500,000 for next week. Folks, that is not acceptable. Not acceptable, says Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick and just about everyone else. Panel, Houstonians are hot and immensely bothered by the performance of the power company, which was granted the privilege of a monopoly and the enormous responsibility that goes with it. You agree with that statement? <coughs> Excuse me, uh, Dan Patrick choked me up. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I don't know enough about uh, power generation and fixing the lines to, to really uh, respond 100% to that. I was reading some uh, articles and it, it seems that from the one in May that they are, they are responding faster today than they did in May. And so I'm bothered by the fact that twice in two months my company is closed and out of business. And I'm paying employees to sit at home and, and not, not generating work for me. And so I'm bothered by that, that this has happened twice and I'm, I'm, losing, mo I'm losing income and I can't get things done. So that's a bother. I don't know where, if, if Centerpoint is, is not getting the job done or if they're doing it right, I don't know. Holly, the perception is, is they're not getting the job done, especially the half million or so folks who are right. still without power. You know, initially, um, I was certainly among those who was withholding judgment and, you know, bad things happen and it does take time and, and, and uh, the power has to be restored in a certain order. You can't just, you know, start flipping switches, right? Because it is a, a dangerous situation. You've got to make sure you're not going to create further problems. So it has to be well managed. Um, as time goes on, the more we learn the more concern I have about Centerpoint and whether or not they were properly prepared and staged prior to this event. You know, I'm still withholding judgment until we get all of the facts. Let's get everybody uh, back up and running, as both uh, Dan Patrick and our Mayor John Whitmire have said. Uh, but I think there's going to be a lot of post event analysis and uh, scrutiny of Centerpoint. These guys have a monopoly. Um, you know, we look to like Florida Power and Light and how quickly they are able to restore power and, and the state of Florida gets a lot of hurricanes. Uh, back to that modeling that, uh, you know, we thought maybe the storm would be coming in at a different place. These storms are unpredictable. They should have been prepared for, for anything. And uh, I was kind of amused to see that some of the folks who early on were saying, no, this could curve and come towards Houston. They were ridiculed in public. I saw several posts saying, oh, these are, you know, people who are doing their own research. Well, you know, they proved to be right. All right, Bob, uh, you've done a lot of living in this hurricane alley. Uh, look, uh, you know, with the privilege of monopoly comes responsibility. And, and, and our friend Sue Lovell says, anytime something hits the Gulf, we need to be ready because it can move our way. Absolutely. Thoughts? Once a storm enters the Gulf of Mexico, it can go anywhere it wants to go. And uh, you know, we've, we saw that when Ike, with Ike, when it was taking a direct path and then all of a sudden veered at the last second. And in that case, it spared Houston a lot of damage and a lot of destruction. Um, I was reminded by my good friend, Jerry Patterson, former Texas Land Commissioner, that during Hurricane Alicia, people were without power in Houston for 13 days. And uh, so 
There were a lot less people here then than there were now, but it does take a lot of time. There's a lot of planning that has to be done in this. Uh, it's a step-by-step -step process. Uh, I praise the men and women that are down here from all over the United States that are working on this and doing everything they can to restore. Nobody's making money by not selling electricity. Hold that.